have an 80 year old neighbor who's always been very active loves to dance and she's an avid gardener well, about a year ago she said she started experiencing extreme pain so she went to her doctor and her doctor said well what do you expect you're 80 years old she went to another doctor same thing but this time it was a little bit more condescending Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. That's just part of aging. And she got a hug from the nurse. Well, she was really furious at that point. So she went to another doc. She said, I know my body. I know something is wrong. And sure enough, when the doctor looked at her medication, they found the problem. Once that medication was changed, she went back to feeling like her normal active self. I'm Paula Marie. Welcome to Boomer Best You. All of us are going to experience some challenges as we age. Certainly everybody's going to experience, or most everybody will experience some age discrimination and some other areas. But for women, we experience those things a little bit differently than men do. And I'm going to talk about three of those areas today. One is age discrimination, particularly in the workplace. Two, identity issues. And three, financial preparation. So first, age discrimination. We live in a culture, uh, a very youth-centric culture, that values appearance. Because of hormones, women tend to show their age more quickly than men do. And when you lose your youthful appearance, and women are valued by their appearance, you lose some of your value. You suddenly start feeling invisible at work. People will talk over you in meetings, and you might be talked to in condescending ways. Again, this is much more true for women than it is for men. A recent study also showed that there's a relationship between age discrimination in the workplace and the number of plastic surgery procedures that are being done today. That's sad. We need to be aware that that's the kind of pressure that age discrimination puts on women. Another area is identity. The uh, literature on retirement says that identity is one of the biggest, biggest challenges people face after they leave the workplace. Well, that's probably true for men, but that's not necessarily true for women. For women, we've uh, managed multiple roles most of our adult life. We've uh, been the primary manager of the home. We've had uh, social connections that we manage, the social calendar. We are often a caregiver, maybe the a parent, the primary parent who takes time out of work to raise some children, and we're the career woman. So for women, and what studies are showing, reports are showing is that when we finally leave the workplace, it's liberation. We get to live our own lives. We get to do the things we want to do. So it can be much different for women than it can for men. And finally, financial preparation. For women, even in 2017, typically we made 80 cents to every dollar that men made. That means our financial foundation isn't as strong as it is typically for a man. So when we go into retirement, we're not going to have the same foundation. And on top of that, we've got to prepare for more years. We tend to live longer. In addition, because many women have gaps in their employment, primarily again because of being the caregivers or maybe taking care of children, our social security is not going to be as strong as it would be for a man. So we start out with less financial security. And that's why it's very important for us to plan ahead, talk to financial advisors and make sure we're on a healthy track. So we very briefly talked about three, just three, of the ways that women and men are going to experience aging and uh, retirement a little bit differently. We need to be prepared. We need to change the narrative on aging. And we need to also have conversations with each other about how we can live our best lives now and in the future. So thanks for joining me today. Have a great week.